Hope. We have Paul Andrews and Tom Keneally collaborating on a project on the Irish potato famine. First question to you, Paul, why? Um, well, it's a film project that I've been um, planning for several years. Uh, very happy to have Tom on board now. Um, of course, he has phenomenal track record um, with successful novels in historical dramas, um, famed for Schindler's Ark, which won him the Man Booker Prize, and he worked very closely, as many people probably don't know, with Steven Spielberg on the original screenplays uh, for Schindler's List, which went on to win seven Oscars. I think it's a story that, uh, to this day, has never really been told, certainly not on the silver screen. Uh, more importantly, it wasn't a subject matter that I was taught in, uh, in the UK at school when I was growing up, yet I grew up in schools in the 70s and 80s at the height of the problems of the IRA. And I think it's a story that has been buried, maybe for many different reasons. And it's not a question of digging up the past. Um, this was something that happened 150 years ago. And I think it's a story that needs to be told and a story that people today can learn from, as well as, of course, we're filmmakers, so we want to make interesting stories, and sometimes that involves conflicts, and some of the greatest movies of all time have been about historical drama, romance, and conflict. Uh, Tom, as a Booker Prize-winning novelist, what attracted you to this film project? Well, I had uh, nearly decided that I was going to write novels for the remainder of my life, uh, but I, uh, was always astounded by the potato famine. I'd done a lot of, um, I'd written a book on Irish convicts who came here during the famine and prior to the famine, and that their crimes were created by the famine, what was happening in Ireland. And so I've always um, had a passion for the subject uh, and the idea of telling it both dramatically and with a certain authenticity, above all with an emotional authenticity, is a, a, a grand challenge, but I decided that at 81, with my daughter Margaret, I'm up for it. And um, Paul, why would modern audiences be interested in this? I think the audiences um, that are going to cinemas now um, are being spoon-fed a lot of remakes, a lot of movies based on things like Marvel Comics, um, a lot of chain um, movies, for example, things like Fast and Furious, and they're appealing to a lot of the younger crowd. I think the, the, the age group, you know, in terms of uh, the old epics, are not being uh, given the type of movies that they really want to see. And these type of movies are movies where you really experience something at the cinema. It's moving, it's drama, you get involved in the characters and the story. And because they're based on historical fact, there are lessons that can be learned both from an educational point of view and from a thing where mankind, politicians, government decisions can be put right. And these are sometimes reflected in present day matters that are going on at the moment. And I, I think the thing is, a lot of people do like watching epic movies. The top 20 grossing films of all time, many of them are movies between two and three hours long. Um, Schindler's List, for example, Ben-Hur, El Cid, um, Gladiator. These are all great movies, Oscar-winning movies, and movies that many people, uh, many fans will watch many, many times over. They never get tired of watching them. And I think that's a legacy, and that's the sort of thing we want to try and create for cinema goes. Tom, what kind of unique perspective are you, with your background in writing about this sort of thing, going to bring to the screenplay? I, I think um, it's poorly understood that at the height of famines, food is often being exported from the midst of a starving people. And so we want to uh, illustrate the tension that occurred in that society between the Irish and the English and between Irish and Irish over the export of food when you're starving you're going to try to attack the food convoys and that is an aspect of the famine that's never been exploited uh, before and we're trying to um, uh, look at what resistance was offered 
to the conditions that were creating the famine and to the forces of law and order which the Irish were increasingly uh, resenting because they stood between maybe the estate of the landlord where there was food and, and fish to be hunted uh, but was forbidden food and fish and uh, the, 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 the Irish who were trying to penetrate those estates and get food and if they couldn't get it they might burn down uh, ricks, they might burn down houses and so the um, what, what were called the outrages of the time is something we want to look at in this film too. We want it to be a great story of survival and of love but uh, uh, we, we want to use that history to drive the, the tale. And are you going to use that on a broader historical basis or are we going to see it through the lens of some really strong characters? I think the important thing about making movies is about playing to the imagination of uh, the moviegoer. Um, we're not making a documentary about the famine where we're presenting the facts. The backdrop is the famine, but the story itself is um, a very tight love story, um, a love triangle between a young Irish peasant girl who's torn between two loves in the backdrop of conflict, betrayal, um, uh, desolate uh, anxiety to do with food and hunger and a story of survival um, and one in which a lot of people can identify with um, in the modern world and in the tragedies that are going on around the world at the moment. So I think it's, it's, it's a movie first of all. Um, but of course there are historical references to it rather than um, a historical factual uh, documentary if you like. With Schindler the thing about him was that he operated on a scale that you could imagine and you have to feel an intimate connection with individuals in a film and uh, Schindler was a, a lens that enabled you to, to feel intimate personal connection with the people in the film. We want to do this with the Irish famine that killed 1.5 million and caused 1.5 million to immigrate. And the last question for both of you, first Tom and then Paul, why will we definitely see this film in cinemas? Why would we? Because it will be, uh, if we have our way, so touching so humanly engaging that those who see it will insist that 10 other people come and see it too. And Paul, why will we see this film in cinemas? Because we are going to be delivering, or Tom and Meg and his daughter are going to be delivering a fabulous screenplay which will attract an A-list director who is compassionate with the story and a great storyteller. Um, in turn, we will have a top cast with some fantastic music and we're looking to make a movie that will be remembered in years to come as the defining movie um, about the famine and a defining dramatic love story. Thank you both. Thank you. Yeah.